At first glance, some of the most high-tech modern military vessels bear a far closer resemblance to Civil War era ironclads than they do to other ships from the 21st century, but why is that? What is it about those ironclads that's so appealing to modern warship designers? The word ironclad is actually quite a loose term encompassing all sorts of different ship designs, all of which follow the basic principle of being clad in iron. Some, such as the HMS Warrior, look almost identical to the sail-powered frigates that preceded them, while others, such as the CSS Virginia, are a completely different design that would have been far more groundbreaking in their day. The Virginia started life as the Merrimack, which was burned and sunk by Federalists in 1861 to stop her falling into Confederate hands. The wreck was later salvaged, however, and it was found that the lower hull and machinery were broadly undamaged. She was then taken to dry dock and refitted as a casemate ironclad. Essentially, the underwater portions of the hull were the same as other vessels, but the top parts were armoured with iron and shaped to deflect cannon fire. You could still carry plenty of armaments inside the protected hull and fire them out of small gun ports. By keeping the ports small, you restricted the vulnerable openings for other vessels to be able to fire through. You could even retract the guns and cover the openings, creating a virtually impenetrable iron superstructure. Naval power, after all, is all about design and tactics, perfectly demonstrated by this video's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free multiplayer game about confrontations between a range of naval vessels, ground vehicles and aircraft. Different vehicles participate in a single session, meaning that players can drive an armoured vehicle to gain control on the ground, with aircraft providing support from the skies above. Of course, my favourite are the ocean maps where naval vessels come into play. They've recently recently added warships of the French fleet as part of a new Sky Guardians update, along with the Yak-141 vertical takeoff fighter, the Panzer 1S Spag and the legendary Little Bird helicopter. The visuals were also upgraded, so you now see spectacular effects when naval vessels are torn apart and similar attention to detail on ground vehicles and aircraft too, making those fights even more realistic. The Pyrenees, a new picturesque location for aircraft fights, was introduced along with winter variants of several maps for ground battles. There's always something new in War Thunder so if you stop playing in the past, you might be interested in discovering these new features. Download War Thunder for free from the link in the description. New players and those who haven't entered War Thunder for six months or more will receive half a million silver lions, a week of renting legendary German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles as a gift forever, XP boosters, a weaker premium account and other bonuses. Hurry up and get all these from the link in the description. The season of German gifts will soon come to an end. Anyway, back to the US Civil War where we were discussing how the CSS Virginia was protected by a virtually impenetrable iron superstructure. Think about it, if you fire a cannonball at a flat ship's hull it can transfer pretty much all of its energy into penetrating the hull. But if you angle the hull instead, a cannonball will tend to deflect off and keep going, using its energy to continue its flight. Notice how there are no flat surfaces so any cannons fired from nearby vessels will tend to do far less damage. Of course, at the time these sorts of ironclads were introduced, it wasn't so much cannon fire that was the problem, but rather explosive shells. Typically, the explosives were detonated when the shells struck an object. If you have a flat hull, your armour needs to be thick enough to withstand the full force of the blast. Angled armour, however, could be much thinner as it relied on deflecting the shell as well to minimise the chance of detonation. A similar concept was used on the Monitor, which was a Union ironclad that would later face off against the Virginia. Her defences relied on exposing minimum superstructure above the waterline and any that was exposed would be protected by thick armour and shaped to deflect incoming projectiles. The round central turret was a decent target, but you'd need to hit it straight on to cause damage because anything on one of the curved sides would be deflected away. Nonetheless, both designs were so successful that when the Virginia and the Monitor engaged in battle, it ended in a draw with neither vessel able to deal significant damage to the other. But how is any of that of relevance today? We know that shells and ammunition have developed significantly since then, so the shape of modern high-tech vessels surely can't still be down to deflecting fire. Well, in a way it is, but it's no longer about deflecting projectiles, it's all about deflecting radar. If you can deflect radar, you can make your warship look smaller and make it much harder for your enemies to track you. Radar works by sending out an electromagnetic pulse which bounces off objects and returns to its receiver. By timing the length of time between transmission and reception, you can work out a distance to an object along a bearing line. 
as the scanner rotates, you can combine all these echoes to paint a full picture of everything around you. For most vessels, you want to be seen. If other ships know where you are, then they're far less likely to run into you. Big ships usually have no issues as there are so many surfaces that a pulse can bounce off, so you can be pretty sure other ships will see you. Small craft have a bit of a harder time, however, so they will carry something called a radar reflector. It's just an interlocking metal shape that creates a cat's eye effect to reflect electromagnetic radiation back the way it's come. To get an idea of how well another vessel will reflect radar, we usually consider five different properties. Shape. So things like a radar reflector are an ideal shape, but similar shapes along your hull can act the same way. Think about containers on deck, cruise ship balconies, and things like that. You're also considering things like spheres and curved surfaces. They will always have a small portion that reflects the pulse back, so that's a good thing. Aspect. Particularly along the side of the hull, is the hull angled to return the pulse to the sender? It's completely dependent on the sender's location, of course, but it is an important factor when considering visibility on radar. Texture, meaning rough surfaces are going to reflect in lots of directions, while smooth surfaces will reflect in a single direction. Generally, rougher is better, as it has more chance of returning at least part of the pulse to the sender. Material. Metallic objects will be best, and things like fiberglass will be worst. This is why radar reflectors are made of metal, and radar scanner cases are made of fiberglass. And finally, size. Bigger objects are going to show up better than smaller objects. So. How can we use that knowledge on a warship, and what's it got to do with ironclads? Well, on a warship, you want to make yourself as hard to detect as possible. You want smooth flat sides angled upwards so that you'll deflect radar pulses away from other surface vessels. The surface itself should be made of metal, so you can shield all of the random shapes on the inside of the hull. As for shapes, you want to avoid anything circular or curved, as those will always have some part of the surface angled towards the pulse's direction. You can't do much about the overall size, but minimising the amount of superstructure above the water will definitely help. Although nowadays we take these steps to reduce visibility on radar, those same characteristics were used back in the American Civil War to reduce the impact from close quarter projectiles. It's not that modern ships have copied the design, it's just that coincidentally the same design is just as useful against modern electronic systems as it was against 19th century projectiles. As always, if you've enjoyed this video and would like to hear more about it, the link to the director's commentary is down in the description. Otherwise, I'd just like to extend a huge thanks to the entire community. Your continuing support is what keeps this channel going.